Hello, and welcome to this episode of our Analyst Angle series. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research, and I'm joined today by my fellow analyst, Bob LaLiberté. Bob, welcome. It's good to see you. Thanks, Shelley. Great to see you as well. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Well, you know, this is our show. So this week, Cisco held its annual partner summit event in LA. And I know that you and I have been talking about this and kind of going through some of the announcements, and we thought it would be nice to walk through some of those announcements. So audience, that's what you've got in store for you. So for starters, it's clear that Cisco is leaning into its strengths in network and infrastructure management, and you know, while also adapting to the unique demands of AI workloads that are, rea that are our collective reality today. I think the company's news coming out of the Partner Summit includes some significantly expanding its data center portfolio, introducing AI-focused servers and pre-configured AI pods, which are kind of cool. And um, so, Bob, I know that you were, you know, you're a network and infrastructure guy. What did you think about some of these announcements? Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, these are things that we've obviously been briefed on over the, the course of the last several months. You know, clearly the focus through all the spring shows and at Cisco Live was yeah. around AI and, and that shift to supporting those AI environments. And so what you're seeing, the good part is you're starting to see them executing against that yeah. that path and those those messages that they gave us back in June. And so you're starting to see, like you said, those Cisco, Cisco data center and AI ready announcements that came out, especially the validated designs and AI pods. Right. I find this really, really great because some research that we did earlier this year highlighted that the number one way that organizations, that vendors can make their users feel more comfortable deploying, especially like Ethernet solutions for backend AI, is to provide those validated designs for them. Yeah. So I think anything that a vendor can do to do that, and clearly Cisco has taken that to heart, that's what they're bringing out with their validated designs. And beyond that, the AI pod. So if you think about it, it's got Cisco compute, the NVIDIA GPUs and DPUs, Right. The Cisco switches, Cisco optics. <clears throat> I think they're leveraging the vast data storage uh, and NVIDIA, uh, right? So, so all that AI enterprise that they're they're bringing out as well. So, a lot of a combination of putting all the pieces of the recipe together yes. and making it a lot easier for organizations to accelerate. So, while organizations are still trying to figure out what the ROI is for a lot of this, they're spending a lot of money to deploy solutions to try and figure it out. And yeah. so Cisco obviously wants to be in a position to uh, to help organizations do that. Well, and, you know, serving up plug and play solutions is attractive, right? I mean, that's what customers want. You know, one of the things I wanted to step back and say, uh, Cisco published in its uh, AI readiness index. And, you know, part of why this news is so significant is th that study indicated that while 89% of IT professionals reported they plan to deploy AI workloads within the next two years, only 14% of them report having an AI ready infrastructure. Now I know that doesn't surprise you, it doesn't surprise me, but this gap of course <laughs> represents a substantial market opportunity. I think that um, McKinsey's projection was that Gen AI could add up to 4.4 trillion annually to global economic output. So of course, organizations everywhere are sort of scrambling to have their ducks in a row as it relates to infrastructure and, and the ability to um, have an AI ready infrastructure. So these announcements made a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're also, the other important part of that from a network perspective <clears throat> was their announcements around hyperfabric and hyperfabric AI. Yeah. And the reason that's important is they had launched and talked about the Cisco cloud networking. And so what you're seeing here again is them executing against that and yeah. being able to bring out a cloud-based network management solution for organizations deploying right there if you if they're leveraging hyperfabric for both the the back end networks right which is all the gpu connectivity as well as the front end networks and right. so that's super important again our research showed uh, 45 percent of organizations almost half right wanted to have cloud-based network management uh another 39 percent said we want it to be hybrid so both right. in the cloud or on-prem so I think you're seeing, right, the vast majority of organizations recognizing the value of having that. And you're seeing Cisco be able to turn the dial a little bit faster here on executing and being able to deliver and making that shift from just on-premises only network management. Yeah. Cloud-based. So those things are, are super positive. Uh, glad to see it. But, you know, seeing a lot of the, the consolidation happening as well. So I think that's, um, you know, AI assistance, et cetera, those types of things. 
to to provide a more unified solution for organizations. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's attractive. So, what do you think about these announcements? Um, you know, in light of the competition, so Dell, HPE, Lenovo—they're not sitting on their hands. They've all made similar moves to capture the enterprise AI infrastructure market. Where do you see, you know, Cisco fitting um, into this ecosystem and and you know, positioned against its competitors? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a great question because the competition is fierce. It Every is. show we went to this spring was all about AI, right? And all about putting together fully complete packages and solutions. Clearly, Cisco has been known for a long time as that networking leader. Yep. Uh, so obviously, they've got great customer, right? Almost more than half of the organizations out there will have Cisco deployed in, in some form or fashion. So they've already got an in there, and now it's just about how can they capitalize on where they have with their existing customers to help them accelerate their AI journeys. And so I think it's going to be, like I said, their ability, and, and it's interesting, right, that they would bring this out at the partner summit in particular because so much of their business goes through right. their partner organization. And so they're really what they're trying to do here is say how they're enabling their partners to go to their customers and be able to accelerate those AI journeys using a, a completely validated, tested and designed uh, Cisco solution yeah. to, to be able to deploy. Uh, so I think those, those pieces of the puzzle, I think are gonna be super important for organizations. And I think getting the partners up to speed, right? Everyone's, everyone's always been in awe of the Cisco partner program, right? They've built up such great relationships their, their partners are extremely loyal to Cisco and right. drive those those Cisco solutions. So that ability, it's it's no no surprise that they rolled out these announcements at the partner summit. Yeah, and this is, you know, to while the partner ecosystem is a strong partner ecosystem, and I think something like 90% of sales come through that ecosystem, um, you know, it's been a long time since this program has been revamped. And I think some of the industry feedback has been that it's been complex and sometimes difficult to navigate and, and that sort of thing. So I love the fact that the focus here is on, you know, sort of up-leveling partners and helping them be more successful and serve their customers more effectively. And that's really what it's all about. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like I said, it's um, not, not, many, you know, not many tech companies can stand up and say we've had 25 years of a partner program, right, right, right. right. just the longevity of Cisco and, and their ability to always, <clears throat> you know, step up to the plate when there's a new challenge, when there's a transition, yeah. they've always been on top of that. Uh, obviously the AI piece is evolving very quickly. And so Cisco needs to really step up and evolve quickly as well. They really need to accelerate their development around that. And so, you know, and I, and I think, and they're also taking steps to evolve their, their partner program as well yeah. so that they can keep those partners loyal, dedicated, and um, Profitable. You know, working hard. For, yeah. <laughs> Profitable, right? Profitable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, one of the things that, um, you know, when I, when I, think about things like this, I think, well, what, what sets somebody apart in, in, I, as you know, I was just at Cisco's WebEx one event in Florida last week. And, um, you know, what we're seeing is a significant move on Cisco's part in terms of consolidating all products under the, you know, the leadership of G2. And, um, and I think that's a really smart move. And a lot of the message at the WebEx one event is, is, you know, that everything that, the feedback that they had gotten was that things are too disjointed, you know, and, and WebEx is over here and Cisco is over here. And, and, and it just felt like it wasn't a cohesive offering, a solution offering. And so, you know, part of the big news coming out of WebEx One is really a shift in that everything fits under all solutions, all product offerings fit under the umbrella of Cisco. And whether we're talking about collaboration or networking or, or whatever, and so I think that that I think that's a really smart move, and that simplification is what vendors are looking for, what partners are looking for, what customers are looking for, and you know it also presents I think a big opportunity because a lot of and you know and much of what was shared at. at WebEx One was that, you know, a lot of where they see opportunity is that, you know, they have an opportunity in there on the networking front and being able to land and expand and grow that business with 
happy partners is really part of the equation to success. And, you know, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Nothing revolutionary there, but still, I do like that consolidation. I think that's a smart and important move. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you. I, I really like what Chuck did of, of having G2 be in charge of all the products and having it consistent. Yeah. It really eliminates any of the, the territorial boundaries yeah. of of the, the BUs that were that existed. Yeah. Um, I remember from Cisco Live, their theme was Go Beyond. And I remember writing in my my write-up of it saying, yeah, like the to me that Go Beyond was they're going beyond the boundaries of the traditional BUs. Yeah. And they're now going to start doing a lot more, I think, um, integration between all of them and, yeah. and deliver unified solutions. And then only a month or so later, we got the news that G2 was taking over right. all of that. So I think having that single person who can look at across all the different BUs and figure out not just what makes sense for that BU, but what makes sense for the customer being able to tap in to yeah. all the products and solutions across those BUs gives an, a, you know, just a huge opportunity to develop some really powerful, tightly integrated solutions, yeah. leveraging the entirety of the Cisco portfolio. And that's smart business. I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? You know, some final notes before we shift and talk about Cisco's 360 partner program, which is really big news coming out of the partner summit. Um, I'll note that the server that we mentioned is expected to ship by year end and the AI pods are available for order in November. And we'll be watching to see what kind of traction Cisco and partners get here. And that'll of course be the real test. So Bob, let's talk Cisco 360 partner program. I wrote about this a little bit. I wrote about this yesterday and, and it represents what I called it, you know, kind of a watershed moment in, in Cisco's channel strategy. This is a really significant overhaul of the partner ecosystem. And, and part of that overhaul is really shifting away from volume-based metrics to customer outcomes and lifetime value. And this really, you know, as we touched on a minute ago, it positions partners to acquire, to capture more recurring revenue and build deeper relationships with customers. And, you know, prioritizing that, I think, and, and really leaning into partner success is, I, I think that's a smart move. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Like I said, you, you certainly want to keep your partners happy. And I think what they've been dealing with is through no fault, right? Things just evolve, they change, they morph. And so you've had this 25 year old partner program that's just gotten a little bit bulky, a little bit complex yeah. and maybe a little bit outdated. Um, I think that some of the things that I like the most about it is that um, this is not a flipping the switch day one. This is yeah. what we're now all doing there educating the partners on what this new model is going to be. They're giving it like 15 months. And from what I saw, they're also going to be ensuring that they collect feedback along the way. Yeah. So they'll start rolling it out slowly, collecting feedback, making changes where necessary. So I think that that idea, that rollout over the next 15 months, I think is a, is a great move for them. And it ensures that their partners feel like they're part of it. I know they've done a lot of research asking them what they felt, what was wrong. So, you know, dramatically simplifying it, there's only going to be, I think, two designations. You're either a Cisco partner or your preferred partner. Right. Um, there's going to be a lot more focus on getting everyone trained and so forth on those next gen specializations. So I think, I think overall, everything that I've seen about the program uh, is positive. And again, just like the, the cloud networking and everything. This is one of these, the proof is going to be in the pudding. We need to see how, as they roll it out and how the partners respond to it and how the partners gravitate towards this and how they're able to leverage it is really what's going to, to determine yeah. success. Well, and I do feel like I love that, that 15 month runway, um, you know, everybody likes to feel like their feedback is welcome and relevant and integrated into evolution of things and decision making and all that. So, so I like that. Um, you know, you touched on training, and I think this is such a significant part of what what you know these announcements around 360 Partner Program. Um, you know. A couple of stats here in you know, the skills gap in the tech sector, 92% of IT roles are expected to transform due to AI in the coming years. And a we have a global shortage of 4.6 million cybersecurity pros. So this investment in partner enablement is, of course, strategic and well-timed. Um, Cisco did a couple of studies, too, that I thought were really interesting. Their research in the 2024 Cisco AI Readiness Index showed that 
39% of the organizations they surveyed acknowledged that their staff needs significant training on planned AI technologies. You and I know this, right? This is not this is not unique to Cisco or Cisco Partners or any enterprise or any any organization of any size anywhere, right? So AI training is something that is much needed. Um, you know, more tellingly, the Cisco Global AI Partners study showed that while over 25% of partners expect more than 75% of their revenues to come from AI within four to five years, okay, that's a lot. 25% of partners expect more than 75% of their revenue to come from AI, but they face obstacles in, you know, tech deployment ex experience, 62% say they're challenged by that. Um, systems knowledge, 56% say they're challenged by that. Um, their customers face similar challenges with AI talent gaps and, you know, 70% of the people responding to surveys, uh, Cisco's survey here said they lacked a general understanding of AI tools and technology. That's a lot. So, so, so stepping back from that, then Cisco's announcements around the 360 partner program are really pretty awesome. So they're investing 80 million in partner enablement. 20 million of that is dedicated to kind of ladder up training events. Um, and 60 million is allocated for Cisco's preferred partners. You mentioned there's, you know, just two kinds of partners, but 60 million for preferred partners to receive comprehensive benefits. And that includes up to 10 annual Cisco EU subscriptions. And so I think this also is probably a smart strategic move for Cisco because um, it, if it makes, if they make it more attractive for me to be a preferred partner, I'm going to work harder <laughs> to try to be a preferred partner, right? Um, but that whole, this training is all about skills development and providing self-paced options and hands-on labs and continuing ed credits and all of that sort of thing are also um, immediately making available cybersecurity associate training. And this, you know, to me, Cisco has long been um you know, a vendor who truly understands the importance of security and bakes security in at every level within the organization. So, so I was really glad to see that. What, um, you know, you mentioned the 15 month transition period, anything else that stood out to you with regard to these partner 360 partner announcements, Bob? Well, I mean, I think just very quickly going back to the, the training piece yeah. of this, right? I mean, Cisco really set the bar for creating training programs and driving value in organizations and individuals getting their certifications, yeah. right? The CCIEs, people have made their whole career off of the training and learnings they've gotten from Cisco. Yeah. And so I think now you're seeing that evolution again, just like the partner programs evolving, their understanding, and they've had a lot of iterations through this, right? They had the DevNet and things like that, that they were developing and trying to get educated on. I think now with the Cisco U that they're bringing out and enabling all those different subscriptions to all the preferred partners, they're making investments in AI powered learning paths. Right. I think that's right. Hands-on labs and, and so forth, things like that, even getting EDU credits, right? Continuing, continuing education credits. So I think those are all really strong and positive changes that they're making. And again, it's all in an effort to better enable their partners and even individual users, their customers as well, I assume will be able to take advantage of the Cisco U to be able to get trained up on these technologies that they need to. And like I said, they're, they're really world-class in how they do that and put together that training organization and the certifications and driving value to both individuals, businesses, and their partners. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do that. Like I said, the, the proof is in the pudding with the program. I know they're going to be rolling out. You mentioned security a couple of times. If, I, yeah. if I'm correct, I think they're starting out with the security value index first. So yeah. it will be great to see the results of that. I expect we'll probably, I think that's sometime around RSA. So it will be a good proof point to come back and talk to some of the partners around then to find out how that's going. How do they like it? Start getting feedback from people that are using the, the Cisco U. Right. So I think, like I said, I think there's a, you know, obviously change is inevitable but in this case a lot of the changes that we've seen from cisco this summer and into the fall are all really positive for yeah. cisco yeah. right driving a lot of these ai solutions accelerating ai journeys but also enabling their partners understanding what it is they need to make sure that they're able to have you know make sure they're able to protect all the investments they've made in cisco making sure they're staying uh, you know highly profitable 
and are able to you know maintain those strong relationships with their their customers and with with Cisco. So a lot of good things coming out of Cisco. Uh, the question is, you know, how fast can they implement them? Obviously, it's a 15 month journey for the partner program, right. but I know from the product side, we're all pushing them to move faster and faster. So that's- G2, great that you have that job. Sorry to put that <laughs> burden on you. Uh, but really, that's what uh, I think that's what a lot of people are looking at. They want to see the, the goodness that can come out of this combined mm-hmm. integrated portfolio. I agree. I agree. Well, you know, we are looking at this and seeing a well thought out and much needed evolution of Cisco's channel strategy, as you mentioned, Bob, by emphasizing value creation and making many investments in partner capabilities and training and upskilling. And then, of course, simplifying the structure of the program. Um, this, this framework should serve partners very well and for customers as well. So, you know, one of the one of the statements made from the keynote stage that I, that really resonated for me is, you know, we talk a lot, and, and this isn't new, conversations about strategic partnerships and alliances and supporting partners within your ecosystem and that sort of thing. But this this statement um, made from the keynote stage was, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think that going fast is great, but you know, we all have seen people going fast and fizzling out. So I think, you know, moving quickly, but also being able to go far, I think that's a, that's a legitimate goal and it makes a lot of sense. Yep. And I, and I think that far piece is enabled by the tighter integrations across the different BUs yeah. and portfolios. So, you know, as we all know, these modern environments are way more complex. They're far more distributed. You've got applications across data centers, multiple public clouds, edge locations, AIs, you know, rapidly coming in and and driving more complexity. So organizations need to turn to a trusted partner to be able to do that. And that's what Cisco and its partner ecosystem is looking to do. And I think with, with G2 running the entire product portfolio and being able to drive some of those tighter integrations, right? Getting more, I know from networking, it's from my perspective, it's it's kind of like saying we want more cow, cowbell, we want more <laughs> thousand eyes, get us more thousand eyes out there, right? Being able yeah. to, right? These distributed environments in particular, that ability to have insights into the, the public network uh, is going to be hugely important for these organizations. So driving more tightly integration with that, having more tightly integrated network and security is certainly going to be beneficial. So like I said, I think there's lots of opportunity there. There's lots of ways for them to do that. And like you said, it's not just about, yes, they need to move fast, but they also need to make sure they can, they can keep their, their customers and their partners on track to have a far reaching and long lasting relationship with them. Laying that foundation to be able to go far. Well, all right. That is a wrap for this Analyst Angle episode from theCUBE Research. Thanks for joining me and Bob LaLiberté today for this conversation. And to our viewing and listening audience, be sure and keep it here on theCUBE, which is your source for enterprise and emerging tech news. This is Shelley Kramer. We'll see you next time.